On to page six now, one day after barring the Michigan representative from entering the country, Israel says Rashida Tlaib will be allowed to visit her grandmother in the West Bank. But after stipulating that Tlaib will not be allowed to promote boycotts against Israel during her trip, it looks like the 90-year-old will not be getting any visitors. The congresswoman saying today that visiting the country under these oppressive conditions stands against everything she believes in. Of course, this follows back and forth comments between the Michigan lawmaker and President Trump. So joining me now, the founder of the American Truth Project and Daily Ledger contributor, Barry Nussbaum. So Barry, this whole situation is kind of wild from the start. It kind of goes back and forth. Rashida Tlaib sent a letter asking for this, but then when it was granted, they, she says she doesn't want to go. It, is this whole situation, is it this unusual for a country to bar another citizen from coming to it? Actually, Alex, it's very common uh, in Western democracies to bar someone from entering your country who's hostile to your country, who might foment unrest within your country, and in the case of Rashida Tlaib, meet with and be sponsored by a terrorist organization of the worst magnitude. The, the release that they gave to the world of her schedule, Alex, said she was being sponsored by, get this, the terror group in the Palestinian territories who has been publishing, get this, that Jews drink Christian blood on Passover. That is her sponsor for the trip. And she publicized it. Of course, Israel wants her not to come. I'm shocked that they gave her a pass to go see her grandma. Yeah, and on top of that, too, I mean, Israel released a statement kind of saying why they weren't originally allowing her and Congresswoman Ilhan Omar to come to the country. And one of them was just as you were saying, the people she was meeting with. But on top of that, there were no scheduled trips with Israeli officials. And they also cited their past support for the BDS movement. Of course, it's the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement against Israel, which is within itself thought to be inherently anti-Semitic. So really, is this even a surprise for these lawmakers? Should they be surprised that they're being banned for their support of a ban of Israel? I'm stunned, not only that there's not unanimity among supporters uh, of the Israel position, but any kind of sympathy for Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar. Ironically, the big fight that Tlaib put up with Alex, I need to see my grandmother before she dies. So what did Israel say? Okay, just promise when you come to Israel, you won't promote violence. That's all they asked her to do. She said, okay, I won't. And then she said, I'm not going because they're racists and they're bigots and they're um, promoters of apartheid and they're Nazi-like. Look, Rashida Tlaib has been lying for a long time, long before she ever got to Congress. What makes me sad, Alex, is her narrative is all over the news. Every word Donald Trump said was correct. She's anti-Semitic, she's anti-Israel, and it's an embarrassment if she goes. And you know what? I'm thrilled she's gonna stay home and she can spout her racism from her office in the Capitol building. You know, the office where she took down a picture of Israel and renamed it Palestine on her first day in office. You know, right when she got elected that night, she said, I'm going to go to Washington and I'm going to impeach the M effort. That's how she started her job in Congress. Really, really classy lady. And, you know, you kind of mentioned that, for example, her support of Palestine is very much so outspoken. And, there, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's OK to have, I guess, differing opinions based on wherever you may fall. But it's another thing to claim that there's dual loyalties. And that's something that for example, a lot of people on the right got in trouble for, for saying that maybe Ilan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, uh, were doing in regard to Palestine. You mentioned, uh, what, uh, Ilan, or excuse me, what Rashida Tlaib did, in addition to wearing the Palestinian flag when she was sworn into Congress. But now you see people as on the left as well coming out in necessarily and kind of, uh, accusing Israelis, uh, Israeli Americans rather, of being dual loyalists or to other causes within themselves. I actually have a sound bite that I want to, uh, show you really quick. It's Ted Lou yesterday coming after the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. of Israel. I want to take a look at that clip. It is outrageous uh, that the U.S. government is working against having an American go visit a relative uh, in Israel. Ambassador Friedman, uh, the U.S. ambassador to Israel, uh, actually, I think he should resign because he doesn't seem to understand that his allegiance is to America, not to a foreign power. He should be defending the rights of Americans to travel to other countries and to visit their relatives. <laughs> 
So, I mean, that right on its face is an example of someone. It's an anti-Semitic trope, really. I mean, someone claiming that a, a Jewish person has a dual allegiance not to the United States, but rather to Israel. What's your take on that soundbite? Uh, that congressman is sadly infamous for his wacky left wing, in this case, dumb statements. Ambassador Freeman did what he should have done, which is to say Israel is our closest ally and anyone that goes there that advocates for the destruction of the state of Israel ought to be barred. And Congressman Lou then says, and it's really sad that she can't see her grandma. Israel said she can go see her grandmother and Tlaib agreed she would not advocate for violence and terrorism while seeing her grandmother. And she reneged and said, now I'm not going to go. So if anyone ought to be quiet and maybe even consider another line of work, it's the congressman you quoted rather than the ambassador who has done a smashing good job uh, reestablishing the ties uh, on a strong, strong basis between the United States and Israel. He's done a terrific job. And I hope he doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. And, you know, for our viewers, too, I always uh, encourage you to go look up things for yourself. Look at Rashida Tlaib's letter to Israel beforehand. Look at their response. And now look at what she's saying right now. That should lay out everything you need to know. But, Barry, thank you very much for joining us.